Welcome back to another year. It's Braffs at Reed, Doncaster Rovers match preview. Let me know your score predictions and thoughts going into a game in the comments down below. Like the video if you do go on to do so and subscribe if you're new, approaching 100 uh, 250 subscribers. All the support is massively appreciated. Hopefully, the game goes ahead. It's been absolutely freezing in Bradford this week, and hopefully, it picks up by Saturday. Uh, I don't want another frozen pitch. We've already had one this season with Salford on the 9th of December, I want to say it well. Um, so hopefully the game goes ahead and we don't have any problems with that because the pitch this season has been worse than what it has been in recent years which is quite concerning really because I've always thought we've had a good pitch so that's something that, um, that could, could, could be asked of the club. The new supporters uh, minutes has come out. I'll probably get around to doing a reaction to that at some point, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week but let me know your thoughts on that if you've read it in the comments down below. We will get straight into the quiz. Now, uh, do let me know your uh, answers in the comments down below, but also let me know if you want to keep the quiz, if you want to keep it going, because uh, I can appreciate that it might be a boring segment, and if there's any other segments you don't like, I want to see Get Weird in any of the videos, if it's signing reactions, if you want to see me talk about a different segment that, that, I, that I don't do, recommend it, uh, vice versa, if there's something I talk about in them and you don't like, do let me know, and um, let, let, let me know why you don't like it and I'll, I'll probably get rid of it all for constructive criticism and um, and what else are I going to say oh yeah Saturday um, do let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see the match reactions get trimmed down to 10 minutes summarising the game of just the match reaction and then a few hours later or the next day a, play, a separate match ratings player ratings of the players because I can appreciate 20 minutes maybe it's a bit too long for a video it gets trimmed down and it's separate videos maybe you prefer that so do let me know your thoughts on that in the comments down below enough of the waffling and let's get into the preview for Doncaster so uh, a, a boring quiz uh, a lazy one a lazy question I have to admit who were the two players who started at Doncaster away this season 22nd of December I think it was who haven't played since the unbeaten one came to an end um, and is, is it them who came to a demise? I think we all know one of the players is the other one is being injured right lately and has that player, if you know who it is, you probably do I mean you probably should but um, is, is he underrated? You know, Has he been as much to blame for the, the unbeaten one as the other player is who's had a lot of praise recently because of how we've fallen off is the other player who was also playing against Doncaster and doing that unbeaten run is he undervalued in that team? Um, but yeah, let me know your answers and I'll tell you the, the answers on, on uh, Saturday, although you, you will probably know them. Head to heads, we've played 88 games against Doncaster, won 35, drawn 25 and lost 28 games. On the 22nd of December 2023, we got that 3-1 win, a very good um, performance from us there, our last win in the league. 25th February 2023, a 1-0 win away at Doncaster as well. 30th of July, 0-0 draw at home on the first game of that season. The 8th of September, 0-0 draw. And the 6th of April 2019, I think it was, I forgot to put the year down, uh, a 1-0 defeat in that one. So the, oppo the, the opponent's guide, I suppose, if you, if you want to call it that. Key players. Now, Doncaster haven't had a good season so far under Grant McCann. They've been really struggling. In the last preview for the game on the 22nd of December, I had um, I had Ironside, Molyneux and Ben Close. I still have two of those players, but I've put in someone else who uh, has been very consistent for Doncaster this season and has, a, has is, is had a good season, probably one of their better players, and uh, did go under the radar in the last preview, but... Uh, and so did Mo Fowl as well, who I probably should have put in, who's, who's had a very good season, who's now gone to Walsall, which is a great sign for them, and a big miss for Doncaster. But Owen Bailey's come in, a uh, very consistent player, and probably one of their best players this season. Luke Molyneux, um, hasn't, I, I always put him in, um, even though he, he never has hit the heights that we expected of him. He's still a tricky player, and he's still a player that you love to watch when he's on it. And Joe inside, he has scored 11 in 27. Again, another player I expected more from, uh, I don't think he's had enough service this season, but he still uh, could have been doing better for, for Doncaster. But 11 in 27 isn't too bad, to say the least. Uh, into the form and the results then, a 1-1 draw for us against Colchester United on Saturday. A 4-2 defeat to Crawley, a 1-0 defeat to Crew, a 0-0 draw to Stockport and a 2-2 draw to Morecambe. Those last five <laughs> results are probably one of the worst in the league. So looking at Doncaster's last five, it doesn't get much better for them either. A 1-0 defeat to Newport, a 3-1 defeat to Harrogate, uh, got battered there, 3-0 win against MK Dons 
before that World War One draw against Mansfield, so previous to that defeat to Harrogate, they thought they could maybe turn the corner under McCann, and then at the bottom of those last five games, a 3-0 defeat to Notts County. Our home form is disgraceful, to be honest with you, it's absolutely woeful. Hopefully we can try and turn it around, but I can't really see it happening, I can't see a season turning around, but anyway, 19th in the home form league table, 17 points from 12, and only four home wins picked up, which is absolutely abysmal. Their away form doesn't get much better. I mean, it's absolutely grim reading these, these stats for both teams. 23rd Doncaster are for away form. 8 wins from 13. And uh, just the 2 wins. I mean, th that is a terrible um, form all round, really. Grant McCann, uh, looking at his record v City. Obviously, talked spoke about it in the, um, in the, 22nd, on, on the, on the 22nd. I keep mentioning it because it's such a quick period and we, obviously we've got them again in the in the uh, EFL Trophy, which is one I'm looking forward to. Hopefully we can beat them and try and get closer to Wembley, which would be a, a great achievement, really. Um, but I, I keep going back to it because it's su such a short period of time. You probably remembered most of these, but um, we have played an extra game from that last time. Seven games against Grant McCann. Uh, three wins for him and we are beating four times against Graham Alexander it was interesting last time and it got better after we beat them 3-1 because he still is yet to beat Graham Alexander two draws and four defeats in six games against Graham Alexander he's under pressure at the minute outside of looking in I think he needs time and I think he will get time um, but it, obviously the clock's ticking with him. If the if the form keeps going where it is and they get pulled into a relegation battle, there'll be serious scrutiny on him. And the fact that that the, but the the problem is we are only eight points away from Doncaster. Lose to them, we're five points away from them. Obviously, if we beat them, we'd be um, five points away from the playoffs. I think it'd be, um, which ain't good enough, you know, because. Uh, we, if we lose, we're getting pulled into a relegation, not relegation fight, but we're getting pulled in with teams who are trying to stay up. And if we win, we still got a lot to do to try and get in the playoffs. So I didn't actually realise how far away we were from the playoffs because MK don't have two games in hand on us as it is anyway. Um, but anyway, into what can we expect? WCWE. Uh, I think we'll dominate the wide areas. We've got to dominate the wide areas. And the switch to the winger formation with a 3-4-3, three, three, I think that'll only help us. Doncaster are terrible at defending crosses and terrible at stopping crosses from creating to a box and that's something we targeted in the reverse fixture. Obviously Andy Cook's goal came from it. Um, I can't remember the other two. Obviously Smith's goal sort of came from working it in from the left. It's an area that they're vulnerable in and it's definitely an area we need to target and I think we will. And the midfield's weak. It's very easy to bypass and the strikers aren't clinical. So I think that's what we expect. We, we can expect us to target their wide areas. We should be able to dominate the midfield because I don't think they're strong enough in there. And their strikers aren't clinical. And they will get chances against us that with a high pressing that we play with. So hopefully they continue to miss those big chances. Ref watch. Now, uh, Ben Atkinson, I don't think he's really into... Uh, uh, the, the, the Martin Atkinson who refereed at the top level I think he was born in this area in, in Bradford I'm, I'm not sure I might, I might be wrong with that but anyway I don't think he's related to him but he is a dental surgeon is Ben Atkinson which is an interesting one I, you wouldn't have thought that would you he's took charge of 20 games this season with the majority of those coming in League 2 is issued 93 yellow cards and 6 red cards across those 20 games. He refereed Doncaster earlier in the season and they lost 3-1 to Notts County. So my starting 11 for Saturday's game against Doncaster after trying quickly go through this one. Sam Walker in goal, think it's self-explanatory. I don't think Doyle will come in and hopefully that he can try and build off the performance that he got on Saturday. I don't, I don't think he was great. I certainly don't think he was... Um, bad I think it's something you can build off over one of games Halliday I consider playing Gilead instead of Halliday because I don't think he's been great Halliday over the last few games and Gilead played there against Derby and had a pretty decent game and McDonald Small was interesting midfield but I think with a week off Halliday he gets to have that rest and uh, can come back stronger hopefully John Tomkinson um, is starting for me you know he's probably been the best centre back on form at the minute and uh, deserves to keep his place. Sam Stubbs as well. I thought he had a good going against Colchester and Derby, so he's got to keep his place. And then Taylor at fault for the goal. I'd bring him out and play Kieran Kelly, who didn't deserve to lose his place in the first place. And then Clark or Ryan left ring back. It worked home. Let's attack them. You know, let's get a bit more quality down the left side. I think Rydell's been um, poor recently. I I'd say he's been poor or average. You know, 
and when you look at the squad, you need to go for how, how you can get the best out of um, every area. And I think down that left side, we need to attack them. And I think with Odra's offensive skills, we'll be able to get at them with him. Um, Smallwood and Gilead in midfield, like I say, you know, I'll, I'll stick with them too. And Tariq Wright, I think you've got to start him. I said when we signed him, if, if you're signing someone like him, you sign him, you put him straight in the team, you mark his authority, you get that home crowd lifted with the atmosphere. You know, I don't want to see him sat on the bench. I don't want to see him not involved in the match day squad. You know, because we, we had it with J.H. Young against Crawley. You put him in the squad, the atmosphere is up, everyone's up for it. Whereas when he isn't, it's a bit flat because what you're expecting isn't there. Um, so you've got to get him in the team and I'd love to see him start and, you know, with that direct pace that he's got, I think we could, he could really get at Doncaster down that flank. And Chapman, I've been impressed with him recently. He needs to keep that one of games. And I think, uh, you know, with, with the balance that it gives with him, two left footers don't really suit me. Um, so I do like the left and the right foot, whichever side to play on. And Andy Cook's got to start up front. So let me know your lineup in the comments down below. Let me know your score predictions. I, I, I think it'll be a draw again. I said a draw for Colchester. I think it'll be a draw. I think they'll come and settle for the point. Time is to be, you know, do the old antics that we see at Valley Parade. But I'm going to back us for a win. I'm going to go 2-1 City. And I hope that we can try and turn the tide and get a one going. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Like the video if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Have a good one.